in addition to having the ability to install and compile source code, we also have the ability to install actual predetermined packages. Now, a package is very simple. It's basically a bundling of all the source together for a Red Hat operating system. Now, the nice thing about this is it's already prepared for your system. Oftentimes, you can download RPMs that are specific to your version of Red Hat that you're using. So it makes it a little bit more reassuring to know that this particular package is built for our operating system. We don't have to worry about a lot of compatibility issues or missing components. Now, RPM is actually a program that will allow us to install these RPM software packages. Now, packages are going to come in two forms. You're either going to have a .RPM extension or a .SRC RPM extension or source RPM and you have to install them each differently so the RPM itself contains everything that our previous example did with source code it's just all together into a single file now if we want to know if any particular RPMs have already been installed we can use the dash Q to query the package name against what's called the RPM database and that's pretty simple. It basically allows us to go in and say, hey, you know what, do you have this installed for us? And if you do, we can query against version numbers, and we can actually rebuild it. There are a lot of options available to us there. Now, the RPM package database lives under var lib RPM. And again, you can access it using the RPM command, but it's much like the Windows registry in that after installing and removing a lot of software over time, you can cause it to slow down and have poor performance, or it can become corrupted altogether. If it does become corrupt, you can simply use the RPM rebuild DB command, and it will repair the database to a usable form. We also use the RPM to actually perform the installations, and we're going to take a look at that in just a moment. But I also wanted to mention the validation of signatures. It's a very common practice on the internet, especially in hacker circles and security type areas where you might find problems with your packages, such as an integrated rootkit, something that might compromise your system, or a virus. So it's always a really good idea to obtain an MD5 sum or a SHA-1 sum that will allow us to actually verify that the RPM package is what we were intended to be getting. We can validate the signature of the application by using the dash K command. So let's take a quick look at an example of an RPM installation. So we also have, as you can see here, OpenSSH, which is another SSH client, but this time it's actually a SRC RPM file instead of a collection of source files. So the installation here is actually a pretty simple process. Normally, if you did not have a source RPM, you could simply type in an RPM-I space and then the RPM file name, and it would perform the installation for you. But because we're actually using the source, we're going to have to perform an RPM build. So we'll simply type that out. And we're going to go ahead and call a rebuild that will allow it to be built for our system space, and then the name of our file. It's going to let us know that it's performing the installation, and you'll notice that what actually passes down the screen is the exact same thing that we saw when we performed each individual steps of the configure, the make, and then the make install. It just does it all in one shot for us. So it's actually performing what would be the equivalent of 